developing headlines flood the American press following news of the atom explosion within the borders of the Soviet Union. Foreign Minister Vyshinsky arrives for the United Nations Assembly and makes it very clear that he's in no mood for microphone interviews. British Foreign Secretary Ernest Bevin and his American colleagues, Secretary of State Atchison and Mr. Warren Austin, now await Mr. Vyshinsky's speech. But he merely reiterates the old demand for atomic control with no mention of Soviet atom development. Another deadlock threatens, but the Assembly's President, General Romulo of the Philippines, calls for an early debate. The impasse that now exists regarding the international control of atomic energy must be broken. And the assembly must face this question squarely for the sake of mankind and for the peace of the world. Meanwhile, every American atom plant redoubles security precautions. At Hanford, Washington, regulations become even more stringent than in wartime, as drivers' credentials are checked and counterchecked. Even planes are used by the patrols to block very effectively the progress of any suspicious vehicle. So the USA keeps constant vigil over new secrets which may shape the future of the world. <laughs>